Hi guys, uh, so as you probably can imagine, as you can probably see behind me with the flashing Christmassy kind of style thing going on, I'm a bit of a game collector, I've got quite a few, um, and this is a kind of a video just to kind of talk to you about my favourite 10 Xbox 360 games. We'll do different consoles, just let me know which ones you want me to do. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to do the top 10 uh, Xbox 360 games and top 10 sort of hidden gems, you've probably heard of them. But they're my kind of games where I wasn't going to get them because I was like, hmm. And then I had them and they were the best thing ever. So these are my top 10 games. Not in any order, just 10 games that I found really good. So let's go. Um, so the games, are, the games are here. I'll put them on my lap. Um, so the first one, which makes loads of sense, is a, kind of like a, a franchise and it is the Dead Island franchise. And I do apologise, there's a horrible CEX sticker on here. I hate CEX because they stick these stupid stickers on, they won't come off. But yeah, Dead Island. The glare. Dead Island there. Um, and obviously Dead Island Riptide. Uh, where I have this kind of steel book version of it. Uh, but yeah, as you can see. And look, he's about to fall. I think he's going to die. He looks a bit scared. Is he scared? You can't see his face. But these are going to get him. Look at him. He's mental. He is mental. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Mental, mental zombies. Um, the next one for me, and one of the first ones I ever played on the Xbox 360 is Bioshock. Again, I've got the steel case, so forgive me. I haven't got the original case, but steel case, because I'm that cool. Uh, but yes, yeah, Bioshock was fantastic, first person shooter, um, had a bit of a horror element to it compared to others. Um, number two, lost that a little bit. Number three was in the sky and just totally different. There was something quite wonderful about exploring Rapture and this kind of 19, sort of 30s, 20s art deco style uh, horror scene. Just absolutely brilliant. One of the best games and still go back to this one. Really good game. Uh, talking about horror, let's talk about this franchise. This is Fear. Fear is another one um, made by Sierra, I think, made this one. Um, I may be wrong. I am right. Um, Sierra, obviously, were a company that helped on Half-Life when it first came out. Um, and this is a great game. Um, you sort of have a elite sort of bunch of soldiers that are kind of like controlled by this particular little girl here and you have to kind of fight your way through um the first one is brilliant the second one is perfect the third one's a little bit mm, but as a whole franchise always good fun to play always kind of revisit them play them again and again um and there's genuine jump scares in there they are actually quite scary so yeah these games really worth picking up for your collection if you if you can. Um, one at the moment, and you've got to really be careful of this one. When I initially was going to do this about two or three weeks ago, it, it wasn't that expensive. Um, it's just been delisted on everything. So now it's just shot up in price. I think it's about £26, £27 now. But it's Spec Ops, the line. Um, this When I bought this was about three quid. Um, and this was a, a little bit of a cheeky one for me because when I first played it, I didn't know what to expect. It wasn't one that anyone had really heard of. It wasn't a particularly over the top game. It wasn't it was a it was it was a triple a, you know triple A release, but it didn't quite hit where it needed to be. But yeah, what what literally really good game. Just be careful because it is quite expensive at the moment. So obviously the orange box, um, Half Life Two. Released 2001. Wow, this is incredible. One of the best games ever released. Um, and this is brilliant because you get Half-Life 2. You get Half-Life 2 Episode 1 and 2. You get Portal and you get Team Fortress. So it's a really good game. It's about £10 from CEX now. And it's just perfect. It's, it's a really good game to own. Still visit it. Graphics still look sensational. The best Assassin's Creed, in my opinion, is Black Flag, um, just because it just has that that level of everything. I think the action's way better. I think the exploration's better. Number two was my favourite, but this one clinched it for me, and it's a brilliant game. Definitely 
I mean, I'm not an Assassin's Creed fan, but this is one I like to visit. So, yeah, like this one. Um, obviously, Half-Life 3. Half-Life 3? That's a wish. It's never going to be released, is it? Fallout 3. Uh, Fallout 3 is a game that came from nowhere. Nobody really knew what Half-Life... Freaking <sighs> Half-Life. I'm going to have to start this again, aren't I? Nobody knew what Fallout was, uh, really, unless you were a PC gamer. It came out on the Xbox in the October of 2008. Eight, maybe. Uh, but it was brilliant. It was fantastic. It's an RPG. It's exploration. There's great combat. It introduced us to a lot of iconic things that we take for granted now in gaming. Um, but this is a fantastic game. And obviously it also had a couple of add-ons, including the Pit and Operation Anchorage. And it had Broken Steel and Point Lookout. These are also things that, yeah, made it up. There was one other called Mothership Zeta, but you cannot get it on a disc. You have to have the game, uh, year, game of the Year edition, which I don't have. All right, calm down. Um, if you want a game that's just just constant fun, just silly, over the top fun, Serious Sam HD. This is episode one and episode two. Um, this is so much fun. Such a great game. Um, it's over the top. It's loud. There's loads of monsters and creatures and all sorts of stuff chasing you around. You're in Egypt and then you're in Peru and then you're here and then you're there. He's quippy, he's got a bit of Duke Nukem about him, it's gory, and it's just silly. It's chaotic, it's frustrating, and it's brilliant. And I was more than happy to, to get this on the console, because these are my favourite too. So, serious thing. Uh, another franchise here has got to be <clears throat> Left 4 Dead 1 and Left 4 Dead 2. Um, these are one of the reasons why I had an Xbox 360. This is the reason why I think Xbox 360 beat PlayStation. I don't think that's the case with the PS4 or the PS5. I think they hands down beat Xbox now. But back in the day, nothing could touch Xbox. These were fantastic games. Perfect. Four of your friends, online, zombies versus humans. What a game. Made by the, you know, the, the powerhouse that is Source and Valve. Yeah, these, these are the ones. Um, I'm not going to go for the franchise, but I'm going to go for a particular game. Sorry, I don't have the original case, but this is Gears of War 2. Gears of War 2 is my favourite one. 1 was brilliant, 3 was good, 4 was okay, 5 is a dumpster fire. <clears throat> That's fine, but it's not Gears. This is, Gear this is, to me, the perfect Gears game. It's got everything. It's got a fantastic plot. It pushes the characters further. It explores Marcus a little bit more. It, it's brilliant. It's good combat. It looks beautiful, even by today's standards. Gears of War just looks perfect. Brilliant game. Yeah, this is the one to get. Uh, and the last one, and this is the mother of all games for the Xbox 360, and you may disagree, but you've got to agree, this game was a phenomenon, and I think it was the best that this particular range ever got. I don't think it ever got any better than this, and I certainly don't think it ever improved. It got worse once this had been done. But I'm talking about Modern Warfare 2. This is the granddaddy of Xbox 360 games. It was brilliant. How many times did you want to prestige? How many times did you want to go around? The multiplayer online was brilliant. Everyone was still learning it. The campaign was oh, it was amazing. It was next level. This is a game to get if you can get it. It's very cheap. The online's obviously a dead world now. There's nothing on there anymore. But I tell you now, the campaign, you'll play it again and again and again. Um, wow. Yeah, this 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 is the number one for me. This ironically has become the first game on this list. But yeah, this, you know, top notch, best game. Um, so those are the 10 sort of top games I'd suggest for your Xbox 360. Some of them are multi-platform. You can get them on both consoles. Um, Halo 3 was a bit of an honourable mention. I think Halo 3 is a fantastic game. Um, it was atmospheric. It was beautiful. It be a gorgeous looking game. The plot was wicked. Um, 
yeah, it was good. And I don't think, again, I don't think Halo ever really got any better than that one. I think that was the one that kind of launched launched that console. So that was another really good game. And also Dead Rising gets an honourable mention just because it was a Xbox 360 exclusive. So I've got some hidden gems and I'm going to go through those um, just really quick. So <clears throat> you've probably heard of a lot of these, but let's make a start. The first one is a game called Catherine. Um, it is a puzzle relationship sim. Um, it's a really strange game. When I played this, you play a boy who has cheated on his girlfriend with another girl, mysterious girl. He has a dilemma. Does he stay with the girl he's just slept with or does he stay with his girlfriend? And he has to keep moving up this maze in his dream to kind of outrun all kinds of things. There's a big giant baby that chases him at one point. But this is it's a good game and it's good fun and it's a bit tongue in cheek, it's a bit silly and it's good. You, you want to know what happens to him. So definitely want to try. <clears throat> Next up is the James Bond game Bloodstone. Uh, the reason why is just because this is a standalone plot. It is its own Daniel Craig film. Uh, you play as Daniel Craig. It's a complete separate storyline. Yeah, it's it's its own thing. It's not Quantum of Solace or anything like that. It is its own story. It's got its own theme tune. It's a really good game. It's, it's still rough around the edges compared to today, but it's a really good fun game. Next up is Blood Bowl uh, Warhammer. Um, this is uh, American football as violent as you could possibly get it. Um, as you can see, there's an orc just about to pale some guy's head in. It is gory, it's silly, it's over the top. It's based on the tabletop game Blood Bowl from Warhammer. Um, but it's really good fun. And if you've got a couple of mates, a couple of beers, it's a good laugh. Another really good one, especially one to get in your collection, is Alien Breed Trilogy. This game is three games and it is... Um, Oh, how do I describe it? It's like a top-down alien shooting violence fest. Um, you basically are someone on a ship who has to get missions done, a bit like Dead Space. You are continuously attacked by aliens. You collect better weapons, upgrades, and just fight your way through. But it is brilliant. It's good fun. It's really simple. And it was only part of Xbox Arcade. So if you can get this physical copy do because it is well worth it this is a game called lost odyssey <clears throat> it's an rpg um, it came out quite early in the xbox 360's life and it is made by the same people that bought you final fantasy 7 um, when they were getting a bit disenfranchised with the franchise they decided to uh, break off and form their own company and they created this and this is very good um it's a brilliant rpg it's got a lot of good characters to it got a good plot to it and it's a good fun yeah if you want a good rpg to play on the xbox 360 that looks pretty this is definitely the one next is a couple of games and these are brilliant if you have never heard of them a lot of people haven't this is earth defense force i've got earth defense force 2017 and I've got Earth Defense Force uh, Insect Armageddon. These are weird games, but they are good fun. Um, you play a soldier and you are just slaughtering multitudes, multitudes of enemies with guns, um, rocket launchers, flamethrowers, anything. The objective is to stop whatever you can. It's a really good game. It's good if there's like just you and your mate and you just want to have fun. Me and my son, we play these. And we just slaughter gigantic over-the-top robots. It's like Power Rangers on acid. It's brilliant. It's definitely worth a look. And they're quite cheap as well if you can find them. Um, I picked this up for just a couple of quid. And uh, I must admit, the graphics aren't the best. It doesn't look the prettiest. But it is good fun to play. Next one's a bit of a weird one. But it's actually quite good fun. This is One Chan Barra. Or One Chan Barra. Also known as Bikini Samurai Squad. And is as weird. Another Japanese game. Um, I picked this up just because it was really cheap. Uh, it was like two quid. And they go for about £20 online. Um, you play a scantily clad girl who chops away through zombies. So yeah. Um, that is pretty much it really. But it is good fun. It's a bit silly. 
Um, and the car, it's a bit choppy. It's not the most graphically perfect, but it is good fun to play. And uh, especially if you just want something moronic to go through. Um, these are great games. This is Viva Piñata. Uh, Viva Piñata is a garden animal sort of growing building sim. You start off with a plot of land, you create some flowers and you attract animals to your garden. You have to protect them from baddies that come and try and kill them or eat them. Um, and you just have to flourish your garden, keep growing it, uh, make homes for the animals. It's a really nice game to just kind of relax to. And so that's why I bought the special edition because I thought, well, I really like this game. Um, until the second one comes out at the end of this year, Space Marine is an absolute, it's, per, it's brilliant, it's so much fun. You play as a ultramarine, uh, your objective is to wipe out orcs, um, which you do a bit Dynasty Warriors style. So you just chop through them with your chainsaw, you shoot them with your bolt gun, and you just, you just kill as many as you can. Uh, once you get through to that, you start to fight Chaos itself. Uh, again, just hacking through them. The boss fights are fun. The, the missions are fun. The game never lets you sit still. It continuously pushes you forward. There's always something going on. Orcs attacking you or something. Really good fun. Definitely worth a try. This is <clears throat> a puzzle game from Japan. These have been going a long time. You've probably heard of Beautiful Katamari or Katamari. You play a little prince who has to please his dad, who's a gigantic guy, uh, by building planets. And you do that by rolling up stuff until it gets so big. Um, you start off very small and then just keep rolling things up and up and up and up and up until the ball is just too big. And you can basically start rolling buildings. Um, it's quite addictive. Um, <laughs> It's good fun. Um, it's challenging. Some of the levels will have you stuck, but these are definitely worth a try. And this one's not too expensive. Some are ludicrous. I think the one on the PlayStation 2 is like £70 now, but this one's about about tenner. Not too bad. Last one on the list for the hidden gems on this video is Dante's Inferno. If you are a big fan of God of War, um, then this is the one for you. This is from Visceral Games, the guys who bought you Dead Space. Um, they also bought you a few others. I can't remember all the games, but Dead Space was one of them. And you can actually get Isaac Clarke, who is the main character from Dead Space, on here. Um, and yeah, so it is a really good game. It's very God of War. You hack and slash your way through the enemies. And the objective is that the devil has stole your girlfriend. And you're going to go and get her back um, by going straight down to the seventh circle of hell and killing the devil. It is that insane. It's really good fun. Uh, I loved it. Every minute of it. Um, really good. Yeah. Happy. And that is those games, guys. I want to do a couple more videos. If there's any other console you want me to do a top uh, 10 of, let me know and I'll do it. Um, this channel is obviously going to grow. I want to start to do some more effects in it. It's not just me talking. Um but yeah, over the time, I want I want that to be the case. Uh, but guys, thank you so much for your support so far. Um, if there's anything you think I should be doing better or trying to do, just let me know. You know, uh, I'm still growing, um, and hopefully, I'll meet people like minded. You know, that enjoy games and collecting and and just talk about stuff that makes you, you know, happy. Um, but guys, thank you very much for joining me today. Hope you're all having a really good time and in the meantime, I shall, yeah, catch you around. Thanks guys and keep collecting. Goodbye.